Alliance versus 2011 international champions, Navi. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the grand finals. Game number two between Navi and Alliance. Last time in game one, we have Alliance just smacking them around. It was an easy 16 minute victory. Absolutely, they gave away the wisp. They ran a super risky strat. I mean, like, like one of the people in the audience said, it was very ambitious. They had to win the lanes. They had to find early kills. They had to push towers fast. They didn't do any of that. They got oh. crushed. But in game two, Navi have done what Melk said Puppy wanted to do coming into the draft. They banned out the Naga. They banned out the Chen. And with the first pick of this game, Alliance ignored the Wisp, and they went for Visage. So they are basically saying, we can win with Wisp, we can win without it, we can give it away a second pick, it doesn't matter. Come at us, Na'Vi, come at us, that's what they're saying. And Na'Vi, well, uh, in response, they'll pick up an EO, they'll pick up a Bat Rider. I mean, you never see teams get these two heroes in the same draft. It just doesn't happen, Lumi. They've gotten both. Alliance now get a Bulldog Nature's Prophet. Is Alliance just this good? Can they really beat anything? That's scary. That's scary because Navi says, "All right, we're, you know, we'll trade. You know, we'll get the Batrider. You get the Whistler, one way or the other." But now they get both. I don't think any teams in the past, outside of a joke fun game, have ever got both these heroes at the same time. Navi's I'm sure Bruno will feed us some bad. stats or maybe k Poptosis later on. But it's very unusual. I mean. Very, very unusual, and in this tournament, I don't think it's happened a single time. Now the Alliance into the second stage will ban out a Puck. If you look at this game, I actually want to flash back a few months ago to a game that was played between Ten Invictus seconds. Gaming and Zenith, and this was when IG yes. was still, if not completely undefeated, they were just coming off of that eight-month stretch of not dropping any games, your former TI2 champions. They played a game against Zenith where they got every hero that they wanted. This was back when Magnus was a top pick, I believe. They got the Magnus. They got the Batrider. They got everything they wanted, and then Zenith punished them for their greed. It was basically like the fable of King Midas. They got everything, and it turned out to be too much for them to handle. Zenith ran away with that game. Is that what Alliance is trying to bait Navi into, perhaps? Maybe, perhaps. I'm, I think this is a, a confidence shaker. I mean, saying if, if Alliance wins this game, where does Navi go? Ten There's nowhere remaining. else to go because you're giving away their best heroes. And if this is not Five even a close game, if Alliance, remaining. let's say, beats them in 25 minutes, I think Navi's confidence is, is oh. going to be shattered. Nobody has been in this position Navi's in those booths on the big bad. stage uh, or over at Gamescom in Cologne, Germany, more than this, this core of Navi. I mean, they've been here three times now. They took home one championship. They fell short last year, although they made they had the most impressive run in some ways with some big plays, some flashy moments. Now they're here again. So if anyone could withstand losing this game to instill bounce back, it's probably them simply for their experience. But now we're really getting into it. The bands continue to come out. Alliance, they remove a puck, a gyro. Navi's oh. quick reply. Oh, no. Navi's quick reply is going to be a keeper of the light and an anti mid. So Navi goes out. It's a go-to for a Vost, although I think as Lifestore's Weaver are generally the heroes they prefer. And Alliance now pick up Venomancer. Oh, no. So, I mean, they're, re they're sending a message, right? Like, they're saying, we're going to beat you with the heroes you can't beat us with. We're going to give you the best heroes in the game, or at least what people think. No matter what you do, you can't take us. That's got to be the message, right? That's the message, and Ten Venomancer on Dire also means a ton of things, including level 1 Roshan, because Venomancer remaining. Ward Scout, Venomancer Gale is really, really good at backstab. This is a combo. This is the, what they picked against uh, during the group stage, where they just baited with Treants and then got a four-man Gales and just went with the early game two-hit two KO kind of stuff. Navi just doesn't have any level 1. Batrider, he's going to napalm at level 1. That does nothing. Wisp is going to tether at level 1. That does nothing. And against so far, Alchemist Stun is something okay in the level 1 strategy. But if Alliance storms down to the Roshan pit and decides to do some crazy level 1 Roshan strat, Navi so far has nothing to stop it. Yeah, now if you go back to the G1 land finals, the first time that Alliance showed kind of their next level Roshan strat, it was not just a level 1 Roshan strat, it was a 5-man TP into a level 1 Roshan. They all TP to the tier 1 mid, and then they went straight into the pit, and the, their opponents in DK actually couldn't even get to the pit in time to stop it. I, and actually, if you look at it, I mean, they won't, if they're really worried about it, depending on how the rest of this draft unfolds, Navi may be forced to make a choice. Do we just hope they don't do Roche? Do we run there the normal way and just hope they decide not to or that they can't do it in time? Do we take a risk, a gamble, and spend our gold on TP scrolls to contest? Or do we just sack it and say, 
They're going to do it. It's better for us not to lose a fight at Roche and give away an Aegis. There's going to be a lot of possibilities here for Na'Vi, but it's a very uncomfortable choice to make. But that's the problem. Listen to yourself. You have the two best hero in the entire game, and you are uncomfortable with the draft. What message does that send from Alliance? They have a Venomancer, which is not even a third tier support, and they're just sending fear down in Na'Vi's heart. Another hero that does not do Alliance anything against a level one Roshan. I don't know about Na'Vi because I'm shaking right now. I'm so scared for them. I mean, as much as a level one Roche would suck, I'm just looking at Na'Vi's draft right now, and I feel like they could actually give away level one Roche and still win this game. I mean, they have Batrider, oh, Alchemist, know, Wisp, and Bounty Hunter track goal. This team has so many ways to catch up, whether it's the relocate ganks, just stacking and farming for Havos, Shadow Blade ganks for him, Blink Dagger ganks for Denny. I actually think this Navi lineup, as the draft stands now, can give away level one Roche and win the game. That could change with these next two picks, though. All right, LD, if you can find anybody else in this Five room that agrees with your, your Navi hopes, they better be coming out right now. Spectre coming out from Alliance. Okay, now giving away level one Roche is a lot scarier, although Spectre is not particularly good at doing it. What is going on with this draft? Have Loda played Spectre in this tournament at all? Uh, I think he's played it a handful of times in the past, but we've really seen them go to the Coddle PL when they, if they want to go for really late yes, game oriented yes. strat. The anti mage was banned out. If there's no Keeper of the Light, Phantom Lancer is pretty underwhelming. I mean, Keeper of the Light Five is the real heavy three. lifter in that pairing. PL just farms and wins the game eventually. So, where do they go from here? When we've seen Spectre, he often is with Visage. And now I think the Venomancer pick seems maybe a little bit less of a psychological one, although that's a nice bonus. Uh, it's a very strong laning support. And you want re a really strong pair of supports in the laning stage to make up for how weak Spectre is. So maybe it's not a level one Roche. Maybe they're not trying to send a huge message. Just securing their safe lane, securing Lotus Farm, and angling for the late game. Yeah, we still have not figured out exactly what this Vandom Master will Ten do. Is he a defensive remaining. support? Is he an early game ancient stacker? We'll see what Alliance pulls Five out of their hats remaining. or sleeves or whatever they're hiding their tricks from. I mean, we have seen solo mid Venom Answer at very is rarely, that, but in the oh. past... He used is that to be S4 a, hero, though? Yeah, I mean, if you even go back to Fnatic, they used to run Fly as a solo Venom Answer at times. He built an early Vanguard. This was even in Heroes of New Earth, but... Uh, I mean, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Their options are still pretty open, but it looks like a support, looks like a defensive tri-lane, off-lane Bulldog Prophet, or into the jungle, and then S4 is here still to be picked up. That is how it looks. Well, Alliance, one band to go here. Let's see what they are thinking that Na'Vi will pick up. Of course, they haven't really picked up their solo mid hero just yet. You talked about the Venomancer solo mid, but I... That's, I mean, that's like a stretch, That's right? like really out that's there. That's just here. a remote possibility. I mean, if, if Alliance S4 picks Pudge, I'm going to lose it. I'm going to just walk out because, <laughs> like, I don't know. That's the ultimate message, right? Like that is like, yeah, we're going to beat you with everything and anything. I've never seen S4 play Pudge. So they'll no, respect the CK, the CK Wiz combo here. They're going to ban out a CK. Uh, it looks to me like a mid lane Batrider for Dendi, uh, and then probably a Havost Alchemist. Uh, that would put Funic onto the Bounty Hunter, but it looks like they're worried about something different here. Banning out the CK, maybe thinking it's even a Dendi Alk and something weird going on. So. Now, time for uh, time to basically reveal your cards, right? You have to put everything on the table here. Navi looking like they need support. It's probably remain. something pretty safe and stable for them. Shadow Demon's really nice against Spectre if they want to go for Five a very, very remain. safe one. Out could be a support, by the way. Puppy has played him as one. And it's going to be an Enigma now. Alliance so great team fight, great push. I mean, Navi's draft is very greedy, but if they get to late game, they are hard to stop. Yeah, this is Navi's. Probably their five best hero, right? Like, you never really see these Dreams and Nero line up here. They got pretty much everything they want. They have great lanes, they have great jungle, they have a ton of early game gold, a ton of early game experience. But, uh, you know, I'm even wondering if Alliance might go aggressive tri lane here. Spectre's not that strong in the tri lanes, but. Ten seconds. An obvious an Enigma, right? Not either the Enigma or the Batrider is going to be in the jungle. One of them will probably be five soloing. Seconds. So it's going to be a dual lane bottom, most likely. EO plus one, most likely the Alk. So. If you have a Visage, Venno, tri -lane, you can throw any carry here and there, and they can find kills. Yeah, Spectre is not too bad early game, especially yeah. the way that the Western teams are building it. Things like taking Desolates quite early, dealing a ton of pair damage. So let's keep in mind that, like you said, Wisp is not exactly your early game all-star. She's very, very squishy, has no base armor. Alchemist not too strong in that department either, so definitely that is a, a possibility. It's a remote one again. I mean, just, Alliance doesn't show aggressive tri -lanes, right? They always go defensive, they're just more efficient than you, and then they beat you. They're a cold-blooded machine. That's the story of Alliance this tournament. Now, well, it's going to be a Beastmaster for them. Great. Beastmaster has level 1 aura. We, we could still a level, see a level 1 TP. It's a, it's a threat. The threat is in. Will Navi be scared? Will we see any TPs from them? EO can scout the pit with their orb. So if they want to... No, just, they don't give vision anymore. You when, they, when they hit a hero. Yes, yes, that's, that's the thing. 
So, so you can you can expand the orbs. They can at least get some idea if not Alliance is doing it, but it's not necessarily going to be enough to stop it. Again, how do you stop it? Wisp has Tether at one. Dendi has Napalm at one. Funic has nothing at one. Puppy has Malefice, con Conversion at one. Like, there's just no level one good spells. But the fact that they're taking quite a long time to pick their heroes and perhaps still strategizing. You got to figure their game planning for whatever might happen as soon as the creeps spawn. The player's about to hit the world of Dota. They're about to land, and we're about to begin. Navi trailing 0-1 in a best of five. Lumi, this is tense. We're There's waiting with bated breath. I mean, both teams is just like purposely not picking the last hero, so they get like extra, extra. Well, like you said, it's, tr it's strategic. Yeah. And here we go, game two oh, of the so international hard. three grand finals. Alliance versus Navi. Alliance leading one to zero, and already heading down to the bottom lane. We'll introduce them quickly. S4, your Beastmaster. Ake. Your Venomancer, EGM on the Visage, Loda on the Spectre, Admiral Bulldog on that Nature's Prophet. Nothing spent for him yet as far as gold goes. And on the Radiant side, we have Team Navi. Dendi on the Batrider, rushing the bottle. Havos will be your Alk, bringing up the rear. Kuroki, your support EO. Puppy, the Enigma, and then Funic onto his Bounty Hunter. This game starting with the boots. Yeah, we, we've seen this in the past. Alliance not going for the level one Roshan, but using it as a bait. So they're hiding here to the right side of the tree line. They want to scout things out with trees. They are trying to bait Navi to go inside the Roshan pit. Funic does have Skeletal Walk, so he's checking an S4. Not exactly the best person to lead a gank because he does not have any disables. Meanwhile, the, the pull camp has been warded off. You'll see a sentry ward deployed here. And one of the best ways to punish this kind of Navi draft... Oh, we'll see another ward. So. Uh, is to basically slow them down. Because Navi need a lot of things, right? They need a Wisp level 6, they need a Dendi Blink Dagger. Your Alchemist, you want Havos to get his Shadow Blade or his Battle Fury, probably a Shadow Blade knowing Havos, up as quickly as possible. Enigma, you'll want to farm towards the mech, he'll want to get his levels in the jungle. So early on, you'll, they'll use maybe the threat of that Roche or just the threat of an early engagement to head into the enemy jungle. They do place two wards here, an Observer and a Sentry, and this is really clever from Alliance because now Navi are going to have a very hard time de -warding in this camp at level one, especially since it's such a greedy draft. At most, they're going to have one set of sentry wards, and is there a single sentry that can deward both of these? I don't think so. No, there isn't. You got to spend both. You got to guess perfectly, and uh, so far, no rotation has been made to make that deward just yet. For the time being, S4 City mid. Ake okay. rotating back to the top lane. That puts Funic into your offlane bounty hunter, manually blocking the camp with his body, and he'll try and do some economic damage of his own. The Loda's going to get free farm early on. The mid lane will be a Dendi Bat versus an S4 Beastmaster. Again, Dendi with what should be an advantage matchup for him. Now, Funic, continuous jungle harassment. We saw that he looked to do this uh, in the past. To We actually saw that Bulldog did this to Na'Vi, where Funic was farming the level 1 Ancients, and he just used Bounty Hunter to constantly harass, slow down their jungle game, deny their economy, so that your t your other teammates can get ahead. Yeah, at best though, Funic has one Skeletal Walk left here. I think he's trying to pick off a Courier, maybe he's trying to bait this Creepway going towards his direction. That's exactly what he's doing, but he's got to run through a Venomancer that has a Sentry Ward and a Venomancer Gale. If he gets Galed, he is dead. He's running, I think, maybe journeying across the world. Yeah, I do want to point out the pull camp is still warded off, and again, it's because they put down an Observer and a Sentry. Very hard for Navi to fully deward that. Puppy can still jungle. Kuroki can hang around him, but that does slow down your Enigma jungle game a bit. So Navi's not completely screwed by this, but they are slowed down. Right now... Oh, mid lane here. Looks like we have a tether in against S4. He's dropping low. Couple more hits gonna do it. Magic stick up, and he's gonna... No! He First does not survive! To Navi. They're not done yet! Kuroki's gonna fall! One for one. Bulldog standing strong. But Navi, they needed a good start after that last game. Now Ooh, a Gale. Gale's gonna hit, and they're gonna right kick some, but oh, nobody's gonna come in. He should be fine. Wow, this is too far to die. Has a long no, cast. maybe not. Oh, it's, it's gonna not hit. Not enough. Not Ooh. nearly enough. Definitely scared. So, so great start for Navi. You yeah, gotta say. I really like the fact that they made a rotation to the mid lane. Look at Funic though. He has pulled all the way from top lane to his own jungle, and he's farming two camps at once. This is some next level stuff. Yeah. Have we ever seen this? Before? I've never seen anything like this. This is amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing too crazy in terms of kills, but innovation, we're seeing it here from Funic. He has shown some really magnificent movement. He's farming his entire jungle with the mid enemy lane, creeps. But mid lane, it's S4 on the run. Dendi looking to turn two, and he will. Another kill for Navi. Alliance, they had an unbeatable start in game one. They lead one to zero in the best of five. But not V, they were given a lot of very strong, very fearsome heroes. Heroes that are usually banned, and already,
they're making it work. It's not the fact that they have really strong heroes. Obviously, Wisp and Batrider are uh, powerful you know, heroes at their own right, but it's the fact they're rotating. It's the fact that they're creative. And of course, Bounty Hunter is just... He's, he's winning me over. I, I cannot help but fall in love with his play. Yeah, Funnick just farmed his own jungle with the enemy neutrals. That is probably a first in competitive Dota, at least for me. Haven't seen that too often. Now, he's level two. He's heading into the mid lane. S4 has a sentry ward prepared. What? It is going to run out soon. S4 sees him. Not much he can do. Now, Navi do know there's a sentry there. Of course, they are getting free farm on Spectre. That's always going to be scary to deal with, but it's being matched by Havos' farm as well. And he's going for the greedy build. He's rushing a Midas. It's actually pretty much what we see from Loda all the time. you got to say right now, Navi on all counts are definitely winning. Yeah, and because Dendi's got the first blood in the mid lane, and because he's got the second blood there as well, he's going to get his Blink Dagger very, very early. Whereas last game, we saw Navi Dendi didn't even get the Blink Dagger until that fight before the GG. So Dendi's going to have a huge impact this game. And once he hits six, he can even go for a solo kill on S4. That's where you need to have a TP on your Venomancer. You do have a Nature's Prophet, but he's not that good at counter ganking Batrider because of Firefly. So S4, he'll have to play this one very cautiously. The Napalm stacks come through. He's also got to be worried about those Wisp rotations. For now, the Wisp is just sitting mid, waiting for a long-range tether. As soon as Dendi hits six, lane. he could go. Ooh. Not yet. Clearing the wave. The four-minute rune uh, is going to be picked up bottom lane. It's going to be on the Puppy. Now top lane. They've dusted up Funnick. Alliance strikes back. They'll take down Funnick. Make it two to two. Give Lotus some gold, but give a lot more gold to the out because Havos just picked up his Midas. Oh. And that's a four-and-a-half-minute Midas on an Alchemist maxing Greeble's Greed. Can you say hala hala get dala? I mean, we He's gonna be rich. We, we seen Loda just completely go for this build, and he is just a match. He has so much gold throughout the game. He has, it seems like, limitless uh, buybacks, limitless items, and we'll see exactly what Hovos is gonna do. Keep in mind the playstyle of these two carry players are different. Hovos very likely to join fights much, much early on. Yeah, now we have seen in the past, I mean, not as of late, but if you go back to the International 2, Havos is able to adapt his playstyle. At the International 2, there were quite a few games where they picked him a Faceless Void, an Anti-Mage, and he didn't really fight early. He farmed and he won in more of a traditional 4 Protect 1, a late game oriented strat. So if, if they want to go late with track gold, with the lineup they have, they most certainly can. We expect Funnick to join fights, and once he gets a Shadow Blade, he'll probably go for pickoffs, but they don't have to fight that much early on. Speaking of Funnick, trying his best to put on some grubby impression. There you go, wind walk kills. Oh man, still in the neutrals. Now Ooh, a haunt's haunt. coming in. There's some sort of engagement about to break out. It's going to be Ake. Oh, pulled Case in. Rune. Now Case in rune. trouble. Dendi Fullen pulling him far away. Not dead just yet. And Loda just farming top. They've lost the bat. They could lose a Veno soon, or a uh, Beastmaster soon. S4 on the run. Dendi leading 3 to 2. He's really diving for this. He will back off. Na'Vi, it's 3-2. to two. Tander coming in the back line here. Wisp falls in your face, S4. And Funnick picks up yet another kill. I have to remind you, Funnick started on the top lane and had no help. He's level 4, 6 minutes in. This is some impressive, impressive long lane play. They're really digging deep. I mean, they are just pulling everything out. Wisp ganking at level 1. Wisp ganking at level 2 at 3. And now hits 5. Funnick pulling the enemy neutrals to farm his own jungle. They are pulling every possible trick out of the hat. And as a result, they lead already by 2,500 gold, 2,000 experience. Havos free farming. He's going to have his phase boots now, or he could rush the Shadow Blade soon. He's going to have one by the 10 minute mark at the latest. Alliance in Ooh. huge trouble. Oh, Funnick, he's looking for a stun. Keep in mind that if he gets a hit in, there's a sentry here. He's been revealed. Loda joins the fray. Now looking for a fight. Do they have any dust? No dust yet. No, there is some on EGM, but looks like Funnick is going to dodge a bullet and hunt a courier. No, he's, not gonna, he, no. he's, he's not going to get the You can't get yeah. that this early. You really need the phase boots, the leveled up Janata to make it happen. But the fact that he just rotated and drew five people's attention for a good 15 seconds, that means people are free farming elsewhere. If you look at the top lane here, we have Batrider working towards his Blink Dagger. Havos has never actually seen a hero this game so far because all he does is his PVE on the ball lane. He's got his power treads, Midas, and Quality Blade running, and 600 gold. I mean, he, he, he have, it's even possible he could go Battle Fury this game. When you're ahead like this and Alliance are reluctant to take fights when they're playing catch up, I mean, if you do go Battle Fury, Midas, and they don't contest you immediately and constantly, you are going to be so far ahead. You could be 10k gold ahead of that Spectre at 20, 25, 30 minutes, and you could just go win the game on one big push. So, Shadow Blade is what we expect because of aggression, but with Treads, Treads are the better jungling item, so we'll have to see.
Oh, he's uh, going back in the jungle. Definitely want to pick up a big creep. I'll hit himself to level 9 there. Oh, not exactly. Not big enough. Yeah, and, still uh, playing defensively for now. He could also buy a Claymore and leave his options open. So, Havos, a lot of options for him now. Funic, his job is to secure level 6. And Dendi, the Blink Dagger, which, by the way, he's got. It's an 8-minute Blink for Dendi. And as soon as they get track and relocate, which they're about to have relocate, it really is go time. Look at Alliance. Last game, it was Navi who had the supports that were food. This game, it's Alliance who do. Ake has no boots. He is level 3 with 560 health. You look at this Visage, 4 EGM, no boots. I think they're coming out now. Yeah, he's got his boots, but still, anyone is food as far as these supports go to a relocate gang. Yeah, I wonder where that first gank is going to come from. Of course, the, the element of surprise is really, really important. So Dendi with this fresh, shiny new Blink Dagger. Is it going to be mid? Is it going to be S4? He smokes himself as well so that people don't really will see him TP in. And is it going to be top? Mid bot? I mean, anywhere he goes, fine, because he knows that he has real okay. It's going to be mid, but he TP's right under a creep. Yeah, he's been spotted out here, but he is smoked up. Let's see if they stay far enough back. He's going for S4. Blink! Lasso, he's found him anyway! They need this tether stun, and they're going to get it! S4! Down to the low ground! Gets off the roar! Will fall, however! Lodo, though, on the fight! Bottling up his Dendi! Can't touch this, he says! Not dead yet, and he is gonna live! He's thinking of jumping back in. Amber Bulldog down to about half HP. Here comes EGM on his visage. Puppy's in there as There's well. There's a black hole oh, yes, here. He's level is. 7. Yes, he is. Alliance Can in he huge in? trouble. Ooh. They have almost nothing so to cancel it. Dendi's alive. Loda desperate for the kill, but cannot find it. And Lumi, this is normally what we see out of Alliance. Loda just farming. But this game, it's Havos just farming. Yeah, now they are winning this game 4v5, and there is a huge taking time bomb on their side. Havos, 1,200 gold, whatever he wants. Shadow Blade, if he wants it, just about ready to go. And the tier one mid now falls. The safe zone for Alliance, it now gets even smaller. And there is going to be a Shadow Blade up, like you said, and now... They have track. I mean, if Havos starts finding kills, he is not going to stop. And now you see Puppy setting up very offensive wars deep into the enemy jungle. When you have the Hero Wisp, you want to have perfect vision on the enemy camps. You want to make sure that if you... Well, you see the Prophet TP in? Oh yeah, that's a freebie. Do we have yeah, a relocate? For, wait for the relocate, Kuroki. Oh. Trying to find a partner in crime here. Puppy's still lurking on the low ground. If they knew he was here, they would have already come for him. So he knows they don't. In comes Funnick. They've got track. It could be a four hero track kill. Oh. Funnick, oh. he's got the set. Oh, no. Bulldog's been oh, greedy, no. and his greed will be punished. No relocate yet. Are they not going to use they don't it? Don't need it. Don't even need it. Now a smoke. They're spreading to the winds. They've gone in mid as well. Last one, S4. This is getting totally out of control. Haste it or not, S4 will fall. Now they are rolling through the alliance. Another track kill. EGM on the run. He's going to fall. 8-2. to two. It's a good old-fashioned beatdown. Oh, Navi setting up shop in front of the tier 2 tower. They are just throwing so hard. The goal advantage, a massive. The experience advantage, massive. Can they get this tier 2 tower? S4 generally one of the best solo mid Europe. He is 0, 5, and 0. He is not doing a single thing in this game so far. And now, already Havost is in combat shape. He's got the treads, he's got Midas as well as Shadow Blade. He can farm and he can fight. Kuroki gives him that option. I mean, they are so far ahead. <laughs> Can't be stressed enough. Al Alliance do have some access to late game. They have a Prophet, they have a Spectre, but they really need to find pickoffs and slow Navi down. It looks like that's what they want. They're smoked up, but they're heading the wrong way. Narrowly, Navi is going to dodge a bit of a bullet here. They still have Relocate, by the way. They still have Black Hole. We I haven't even seen them use their full arsenal. I think they head to the right way, because if they engage now, they lose. Oh, There's no way. We'll have to see. They've got a Roar, but you can't really go on Kuroki. Now oh, the gank reveal. Meanwhile, Alliance, four heroes, grouped up near mid. Puppy and Kuroki heading towards the top lane, tethered up. Havost is there as well. The mech is almost out for Puppy. Their ability to fight is going to get a whole lot scarier. They can split push. They can gank. It's really pressure on the Alliance. Are they going to smoke again? What are they doing? They're all sitting in the jungle. Three heroes. They're waiting for Dendi. We've never seen this this tournament from the Alliance. I don't think even that game they lost to DK, they look befuddled. They look flummoxed right now. They don't know what to do. Yeah, normally they're off to a beautiful start in terms of experience or gold. They are never really playing from behind. And during the mid game where they falter a little bit, their team play just brings them back. But to me, Alliance really, their, their success always, always come through S4. But if you look at S4, because he has such a poor start, and the, the fact that his hero is not really that strong without a key one or two items, 
S4 is going to have a tough time changing this game around by himself. Yeah, I, I, as much as Alliance do have fantastic late game, Nami can match that to a large extent. Track call, oh, here we go. Here we go. Relocate. Hello, Mr. S4. Say hello to Slapchop. Havost is here. S4, roar. Is oh, he going to land? Oh. He's still alive. Unbelievable. Still he stands. He's not dead yet. EGM might fall one more swipe. He gets the kill. Meanwhile, on the middle lane, they're diving Bona. That's a track kill. That's for three. Funnick, Funnick's gonna get picked off by Loda here. And Loda, Alliance, he's looking, looking for well. the turnaround. But Puppy's got Black Hole. He's got Malefice. Is he gonna unload? Not yet. Oh. I think they could have gone there, but maybe a little bit too far to risk it. Definitely a little bit too far. You don't know where the Venomancer is. Loda very tanky with seven wand charges, as well as the drums available. So good thing that they did not dive. But again, Black Hole is not being used yet. This is, this is the uh, next level puppy strat. They always don't have black hole, so they can never come next to me, so I don't use it. <laughs> the only thing better than using black hole is not, is using, not it. using black hole. <laughs> now a drum's up for Funnic. Navi going for a lot of early to mid game items, the mechs, the treads. Uh, we see the, even the Shadow Blade coming out. They know that once they get a certain level of farm, they can just keep on fighting. And now they've got a huge item for Dendi. There's your four step. If they isolate Loda, they can certainly kill him off, and Dendi's on the prowl. He's always going to be on the prowl this game, looking for anything. His mana is dropping somewhat low. He will see a Illusion Rune and, and snipe that it one. Up. So if you're Alliance now, you are very far behind. I mean, very, yes, very yes, far very, behind. Very, very far behind. You're down 14,000 gold, 10,000 experience to a Wisp, to a Bounty Hunter, to an Alk who went Midas who Max Greeble's Greed. I mean, what, just what's just, your plan? Just on a perspective, Navi is out farming Alliance. Every minute, they're getting a, a tower worth of gold over Alliance. Yeah, they are get, their their advantage increases by a thousand gold per minute. This game. What will Alliance do? Well, stacking is generally their way of coming back, but it's very dangerous to stack against Navi, who could just roll into your jungle, kill two or three, and then take your stack. And I mean, their lineup is very mediocre for farming stacks. Mm -hmm. You look at these heroes; they don't have AOE. There's no Magnus in power. Beastmaster's okay, but that's really where it ends. I mean, they don't have a gyrocopter. They don't have uh, a Phantom Lancer with empowered. They have some late game, sure, but they got to farm the items to get there. And with the pressure that Navi's putting on them, you can see they're sort of blo they're locked into this. Look at that GPM. 15 minutes in. Havos, like you said, PVE Dota. He's yet to really join a fight. 1 0 and 2, and yet he is so fat. Here comes Alliance. I mean, this smoke. Whoa, can they get relocate out there? here? If they really need to, no, they're, they're still running. The tier one's up. If they fight oh, this, they turn. this is going to be bad. They turn. Here comes the turnaround. Stun on the EGM. Where's the follow up? Nothing yet. There's a few heroes here. Familiar's coming out, and Alliance is going to back off. But that's a lot of wasted time. Meanwhile, middle lane. Here I'll comes relocate. the relocate. You gank us. We dodge it and gank you twice as hard. Bulldog will fall. And Na'Vi in full control of game two. S4 drops a beast, Master Roar, but he has no backup here. Ten of movement speed forward here. Couple more rocks. It's going to do it. Havos finds himself a double kill. A so care is finished in 16 minutes. What is this form? He is richer than God. He's hardly had to fight, but now if he wants wants to, he most certainly oh, can. Dendi forcing forward, really wanting to dive a two-heel kill, but I don't think it's enough. In comes the stun. EGM, one stun, three swipes, and he's down! My god, Navi is rolling so hard. And when you have a carry like Havos, they're so fortunate to have Havos, who never really forces to trouble, who Ooh. dives, but make sure they get kills. The fortitude of this carry player. I mean, why does he have a four there either? Like, I'm not sure what that's about. I mean, I'm just I'm looking at a game now where a, game one was a complete stomp in favor of the Alliance. Game two, a complete stomp in favor of Navi. If you looked at the way the Alliance was playing heading into this match, a lot of their games were going 40 plus minutes. And if they weren't, if they were winning sooner, it was still with a late game strat with Keeper of the Light, Phantom Lancer, Lone Druid, Nature's Prophet, a lot of late game heroes. Both games have been very quick. Game two's not over, but man, it sure feels like it right now. Roshan, next in line, slapping and chopping. Havos, he'll have Roche. Then if he wants his BKB, he's nearly got it. The gold strat is really paying off, and here we go. Oh, relocate top, and they're gonna find Loda, the last hope. He just get melted by Havos. Oh, Havos, by the way, up to 3,200 gold. Didn't he just finish a Soul Curse? Yeah, BKB's coming soon, and what if he wants it, and once he gets it, good luck to Alliance stopping what's coming their way. There's a freight train rolling down the tracks, and it's about 
to run into a car, and let me tell you, Lumi, the car gives way, not the freight train. I mean, he doesn't even need BKB in this game. In fact, he's going for a heart. Yeah, BKB, sure, it's going to block a couple of stuns, blocks a couple of nukes, but at this point, he doesn't care. He has so much frontline tank, he's going to go for a heart. It's a great sieging Dance, item. And uh, when you're hit by this top. much, when you're hit by, what is it, 20,000 gold now? They have over Eclipse. 1,000 gold per minute. Yeah. I've never actually seen this in a professional game. I've seen close to it, but this is, I mean, it's like 1,100, 1,200 gold per minute. At, that's the rate they're gaining an advantage. That's not their lead, that's the rate they're gaining an advantage. It's not even how fast they're farming. Oh my goodness. The tier two falls top. There's one outer tower. Now B, and soon they're gonna kick down the front door. Alliance, their last stand in game two, might be coming soon. Navi, full map control. Vlad's probably on the way for Funix soon. Everybody's rich. Puppy's now got a mech. He's got 2.5k gold. They can just they can just A-click towards the enemy base. Five mana, just death ball. And if Alliance try to leave to catch up, if they try to farm, Loda, what we saw to Burning happen in that game three against Alliance, where he died at his tier three, could easily happen to Loda Spectre this game. Yeah, you can see that right now, Alliance is trying to set up a bait with Loda. In fact, I, when you ask me what they need to do about Five, ten minutes ago, Alliance, I think if they could get some bait going, maybe bait in a relocate and then just wipe them, that might be a beginning of a comeback. But right now, that's just a far cry. They're so far behind. Yet another tower goes down and more advantage goes to Navi. Now is the time to break the base. Kuroki already has a vitality booster. Navi, BKB coming soon for Puppy. Go. They're not going to wait. He'll boast in the front lines. To the lines he goes. He'll start hitting the tower. The pressure is here. They will have to respond. The Familiars try to stun. One falls in doing so, and they just don't stop. They'll back off. They'll reset. They'll reload. Dendi with a Yule Scepter. Whenever Navi wants to pick a fight, they can. And if Alliance does not defend now, they will start losing their first lane of Rax. Oh, bitch, jump in against S4. He gets pulled back out. And S4 is going to get focused so hard that he does not know what him. Meanwhile, Hobos, 1v4, deep in the base. He does not care. Immediate buyback. Yule Scepter back up. Can we get a black hole? Yeah, no, no, no black hole. S4 drops his world first. They want Bulldog. Bulldog chasing in. Yeah, Alliance, Bulldog. They just can't stand against this level of damage. Puppy's still hunting. Stun on Ake. They don't even need the black hole. It's a route. It's a retreat to the fountain. They'll find S4. S4's dead in a matter of seconds. Four to fall. They're farming Alliance in their own base. This is the most one-sided game that the Alliance has lost in this entire tournament. 20 minutes in. 20 kills. The gold lead 30,000 and it's GG. What was once a best of five is now resetting to a best of three. It's all tied up. Navi has struck back with a vengeance. They have struck back with a sledgehammer. I have never, ever seen in a professional game where we had such high goal lead. This is the grand finals of the international, but before we send it back to the analysts, we have to remind that it was S4 that gave away both Wisp and Bad, and I could tell you that's not going to happen again. Back yeah, to you guys. They tried it. Yeah, it's crazy. Back to you guys. Navi bring back game two then, and it seems that both teams are flexing their muscles. <laughs> Navi had it like pretty hard in the third game, and they were like, well, you know what? If you want to do that, we can do that too. And they did get, as uh, uh, Lumi mentioned, the Wisp and the Bat. And it was just a nightmare for S4. And I think that's a big problem. S4 needs to be in the team fights and needs to have the items, at least for the mid game. But he just got shut down so hard. That was the scariest performance we've seen all tournament. I'm so impressed by Na'Vi. And they just made S4 look like this was his first time playing Dota. The Bat Rider and Wisp on the middle lane played by Kuroki and Dendi it was just... They were stomping him into the ground and saying, this is our house. We've been in this final before and we're going to take it this time around. So do you think it was overconfidence by Navi just giving them Bat, giving them Wisp, giving them Alchemist too? And with a third pick Venomancer, was it just overconfidence? Hey, we want to beat you with style because we think we're way better than you? It certainly smells like that, definitely. It's interesting uh, because I was trying to find or understand what Alliance was going for here. And a year ago, it would have been impossible to talk about whether another team ran the exact same lineup as someone in the international finals. Actually, Alliance, and I was talking to Melk about this, uh, copied something that EG did before, this combination of, let me remind the, the full heroes, uh, Nature's Prophet with uh, Spectre uh, for the global gank and uh, Visage and Venomancer as support. It's something that EG did before. They beat Alliance with it at the defense season four. 
and they were doing successfully. The, the success rate of this lineup was 4-0. I think they were very convinced with that. But Navi took everything to the next level and it didn't come to the picks. It came to the amazing plays from everyone. Then the Kuroki, yep. the Wisp was always there. There was not a Wisp that was waiting until level 6 to be active. This Kuroki was rotating way before and same uh, with the Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter was there jumping and getting kills way before he got the truck and putting that pr uh, early pressure on Alliance made it so that the rest of the team, especially Bulldog and Loda, became non-factors really, really fast. Yeah, it, it, just the Wisp combo was incredible for every single gank that Dendi wanted to set up on the Batrider. But we'll talk about that in a little moment after the replay. You can see actually S4 does get away. That was a nice little Shadow Blade last hit there from Havos, who's kind of I mean, he just wasn't scared of anything in the base. There was nothing well, look at his do. items. Yeah. Yeah. Solkaras, Heart of Therese, we're 10 minutes into the game. I, Come I, on. I wanted him to buy a rod of Athos when he had uh, for his next item, because he just sat around like a uh, 3k goal, but he finished up a heart. I just want to be funny, just not let them, but not let them run away whatsoever. But uh, a big, big victory there. So, yeah, we'll talk more about the game in just a moment. But I believe that Casey is uh, ready for an interview with some of the fans. So we'd quite like to see what the fans...